Hello guys, MobyCuban here, back with yet another uh, Witch Doctor build guide video. Last time we talked about the Legacy of Nightmares Carnival build, and so today I wanted to shed a little bit of light on the rather underappreciated Zunimasa set. Um, Zunimasa has had a long history here in the game. I believe it was introduced in either patch 2.1 or... 2.2. Um, Zunimasa used to be really good. Um, that was back in the days where Zunimasa's carnival build was the meta, and practically everybody was running carnival. But as the patches went by and the meta changed, Zunimasa got put on the back burner for a really long time. And even with its recent revamping here in patch 2.4, it's not the greatest set out there. But it's certainly a lot better now that they buffed it to 800%. But I know a common complaint is that, um, Thanks to this, we can't run um, the carnival setup for Zunimasa is a little lackluster since you have to keep using a, uh, a mana spender, and that kind of interferes when you're trying to get good damage with your darts, but you have to keep spending time to cast a mana spender so that your pets actually do damage. So in order to work around that particular problem, I came up with this build, which allows me to not worry about generators, and instead lets me focus on using my mana spender to proc Zunimasa's um, buff for my pet damage. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing and you'll see a little bit of my mindset and how I went about this. So first of all we're using Haunt, Poison Spirit. Um, it's a low cost mana spender. You get a nice big chunk of damage over time to your enemies and your enemies also take 20% more damage for the duration that they're affected by Haunt, which is never a terrible thing. Um, we're running Spirit Walk Jaunt, just your basic get out of trouble skill. This is like the Demon Hunter's Vault or the Wizard's Teleport in terms of just maneuverability and letting you get around enemies when you're in a jam. We're running Summon Zombie Dogs Leeching Beasts. Um, this is so your zombie dogs heal you for 100% of your life on hit with every attack. I currently have about 25,000 life on hit. So this helps fill my... Um, with how many pets of mine attack, including myself, I'm healing most of the time. So... It's pretty handy. And the dog itself is going to do pretty decent damage thanks to the different things we're running in the setup. I'm running Gargantua and Restless Giant simply because I'm currently running physical on my bracers. And so to take advantage of that physical buff I'm just using the physical rune of Gargantuan. Um, he's not bad to have around when you're fighting elite packs. He does do a decent amount of damage. And with him getting buffed with the, uh... With him getting the buff from the effect of this rune, he he's quite helpful to have on your team. I know other people would maybe say run Wrathful Protector, 
but if you're gonna run Wrathful Protector, you're gonna need way more cooldown reduction than what I have in this build, so I just, I don't bother with it. We're running Fetish Army Legion of Daggers, again, taking advantage of that physical roll. Also, this gives you three extra fetishes, as opposed to the typical five, which is more fetishes to block for you, more that are attacking your enemies. All in all, it's just a good, sound investment, I think, to have for this. We're running Big Bad Voodoo Slam Dance, of course. 20% um, attack and movement speed buff, 30% damage buff to you and your your uh, pets, so this is definitely good, and since we're going to be running a Star Metal Kukri in the cube, we can basically spam this to our heart's content once we have all our fetishes out. And since Zunimasa makes it so that your fetish army lasts forever, you don't have the problem with Legacy of Nightmares where you have to constantly resummon your army. So all in all, that's a really nice thing. For passives, we're only running four. We're not running a Hellfire amulet on this setup. There's there's simply no room currently for it with what I'm trying to do. And what we're doing is um, we're currently running the Endless Walk set for that little bit more damage. If you don't want to run Endless Walk, you could always sub out uh, the Compass Rose for maybe Short Man's Finger or one of the... either the Tall Man's Finger or the Short Man's Finger. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So our four passives here are Rush of Essence, Confidence Ritual, Midnight Feast, and Swampland Attunement. Swampland Attunement because it gives you that greater toughness for you and your pets when you're surrounded by mobs, which mobs are usually the bane of the Witch Doctor. Um, Midnight Feast because it buffs both the zombie dogs and the gargantuan, and it makes the one dog that will get through the tall man's finger a lot stronger. Confidence Ritual, because you are going to be within 20 yards all the time, since you want to be haunting everything for your pets and staying close to them so your enemies can't really get at you. And then Rush of Essence is how we can run Haunt basically as much as we want, because we get 100 mana back over 10 seconds, so that's 10 mana a second, and Haunt only costs 50 so it's a good deal. For gear wise, now this is by no means optimized. Um, there's a lot of gear for this character that I would rather it have, but most of the gear that I've farmed up for this character is currently in seasonal, so I won't have access to that until the season's over. But for now, I'm pretty content with how it looks. So we've got the Renho Flare, um, even though it's basically useless here. I'm not running Plague of Toads or anything. It's not ancient, so you can always do better for the weapon. Literally any ancient weapon here would be great. Probably I would recommend... Oh, excuse me. I would probably recommend the Star Metal Kukri for the weapon slot, simply so that you can have the option to run something else in the cube. Um, we are running the six-piece Zunimasa by running the Mojo, boots, pants, ring, gloves, and chest plate. And for the gloves, ideally you would have intelligence, attack speed, CHD, and CHC. Uh, for the chest, I'm, I'm pretty content with how this rolled. Um, intelligence, vitality, three sockets. And then I got some haunt damage, which isn't terrible. 
Um, if you want to, you could maybe reroll the haunt damage for more damage for one of your pets, either your summon zombie dog, your gargantuan, or your fetish army damage. But I like making haunt hit a little bit harder, since it's the only skill that isn't currently being buffed by the elemental damage roll on my bracers. Um, running belt of transcendence so that we don't have to run fetish psychophants. Um, an ancient version of this would definitely be better, but I don't currently have an ancient, so deal with what you can deal with. Um, running Endless Walk set, so that's the Compass Rose and the Traveler's Pledge. Ideal roles for these would be Intelligence, CHD, CHC, um, Natural Socket, and then maybe if you could swing at attack speed on the amulet. And for this, for the compass rose also, I would probably prefer intelligence, vitality, critical hit chance, and then critical hit damage. If not critical hit chance on the ring, I would probably go and try and roll for attack speed since greater attack speed will definitely buff up your pets. Um, for those of you wondering why we're running the Endless Walk set, while moving, damage taken is reduced by up to 50%, and while standing still, damage dealt is increased by up to 100%. Um, the Endless Walk set works on this scaling kind of uh, mechanism, where as one goes up, the other one will go down, and vice versa. So if you're moving around, and you were standing still, like I'm standing still right now, and you can see we've got the 100, the, the stopping for directions buff from the Endless Walk set. And it's at 100% because I'm standing still. Now as I move, you can see that stopping for directions is going down, and this walking for, or this walking endlessly buff is showing up. <coughs> and it maxes out at 50 here, as you can see. And then as soon as I stop, stopping for directions starts to increase back up again. <laughs> for a bracer, I'm running a strong arm bracer, simply because my pets will be knocking back some enemies, particularly the gargantuan and the zombie dog. So having them take extra damage from that is just usually pretty decent to have. Um, if you were going to run a different bracer, which you totally could, I just don't because I don't have room on the skill bar for, um, Soul Harvest, because you could run the Kumba's Ornament if you wanted maybe a little more toughness and vitality and whatnot, but strong arm bracers, I think, either these or Nemesis bracers, so you can spawn those extra elites, would probably be best for this. And then, normally, idealistically, I think, you would be running a Mask of Jerem in the Helm, and then you would use the Kanai Cube to run Tasker and Theo to take full advantage of pet damage. But, here's why I'm not doing that. In the case of the Zombie Dog and the Gargantuan, the two-piece Helltooth set makes it so that your zombie dogs and gargantuans deal more damage. Well, basically, it gives them a DOT, the Necrosis DOT. So they take 1,500% da weapon damage. They get, they take 20% more damage from all sources. So basically, every time your zombie dog or gargantuan hits, the next time they hit, your enemy's going to take more damage from them. Plus, they become slowed, so they can proc Beta the Trapped here. So, that's why I'm running that there. For Legendary Gems, I'm running Beta the Trapped, obviously. Esoteric Alteration, so we can get a little bit more toughness. And then Enforcer to increase pet damage and make it so that your pets themselves take less damage from enemies.
which when you're running in the higher rifts you're not going to want your pets to be constantly dying so that's probably the best way to go about that um, for the shoulder here I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-roll the resource cost reduction to vitality here more toughness is never a bad thing but the best rolls for these shoulders would be int, vit, resistance, or armor. And then I would probably say roll zombie dog or gargantuan or fetish army damage onto it. Probably be your best bet. Oh god, I love how I'm, I don't even have this fully done yet. Here on the helm, we're going to want to try and get some, uh, some critical hit chance. There we go. And int vitality, critical hit chance, and then natural socket. I would recommend putting a vitality gem in there just for a little bit more toughness. If you're worried about cooldowns, which you shouldn't, if you're running Star Metal Kukri, since that makes it so Big Bad Voodoo is basically up all the time. Your fetish army's up basically all the time from Zunimasa anyway. And since its cooldown's reduced by 80% from the two set bonus, that leaves only, let's see, 80% of 120. That leaves maybe 20 seconds of cooldown that you have to wait and again Star Metal Kukri will just eat through that time. Um, so Helltooth, two piece Helltooth is not necessary if you were going to not run Helltooth like I said run a Mask of Jerem here. <coughs> um, for your shoulders you could probably run something like Pauldrons of the Skeleton King for that extra life chance since we are not running spirit vessel here in the build if you wanted to run spirit vessel here I would say drop confidence ritual since that's really the only one that's kind of not mandatory for the build uh, in Kanai's Cube, as I said, we're running Star Metal Kukri to reduce the cooldown of Fetish Army and Big Bad Voodoo. Um, we're running the Mask of Jerem just so we can get that max roll for the pet damage. Like I said, if you have a decently rolled Mask of Jerem, if you have a Mask of Jerem that's rolled like 95 or up, you're you're pretty okay, and you could probably make do with that, and then you could switch this from Mask of Jerem to uh, Tasker and Theo here. And then in the last slot, since my ring slots are taken up by Zunimasa's pockets and the Compass Rose, I'm running Tall Man's Finger here, just so that it'll make my dog do more damage. And then with how often my dog hits that's just going to give me more toughness um... conversely what you could do when you're not if you're not running star metal in the cube i would highly recommend running the ukapian serpent because this will make you way more tanky and if you're more tanky between 30 percent that you would get from the serpent and then you could run um, instead of a leeching beast you could run lifelink so then you'd get 40 percent damage reduction from just having your zombie dog out which isn't isn't bad at all and then for paragon points uh, max out your movement speed first I got 11 percent movement speed on my boots so I only need 14 here in Paragon. Sink the rest into Intelligence. I don't believe Vitality 
is necessary here in the Paragons, thanks to just how much vitality I've rolled on my other gear. Uh, for offense, I would focus on attack speed first, then critical hit damage or critical hit chance, depending on which you have more of at the time. If you have more critical hit chance than damage, then I would focus on the damage first and then bulk up your critical hit chance and then focus on cooldown reduction since there's really no skills on the bar that we're worried about cooldown unless you get killed and then zombie dog and gargantuan can maybe take a minute but <sighs> while they're not up you have your fetish army and the fetishes from your belt of transcendence anyway so it's not a huge problem for defense, I would focus on resist all first, then armor, life, life regen. Utility, start with area damage. Area damage is very, very helpful in this patch now that they've fixed it. And when you're fighting more than six enemies is when area damage really starts to shine. Um, after you've maxed out area damage, I would focus on resource cost reduction then life on hit and then gold find since gold find will be helpful when we're running regular rips not so much when we're running greater rips now uh... Hmm. now fifty's not anything impressive but i feel it'll be the best way to show you that this build is capable of running above T10 and I just want to give you an example of how it works so you go in keep your distance somewhat you want to let your pets do most of the the work but you just keep spamming your haunt so that your enemies will take more damage and then that lets your pets really really shine and make sure that every time you have big bad voodoo that you cast it because having big bad voodoo out is going to make your pets hit so much harder And plus it makes you hit a little harder. So it's never it's never a bad thing for you to have a little more damage. <coughs> but this is gonna be kind of a kiting build since you don't wanna be up close and personal to enemies. You wanna let your pets take care of that. <coughs> you do, however, wanna make sure that you stay within twenty-five or within 20 yards of your enemies that way your pets can get the the full benefit of uh, your confidence ritual but the pets can often hit really hard like I've seen at times I've seen I think it's my zombie dog hit for up to almost like 10 billion crit and that's without a power pylon like with a power pylon I can only imagine how hard these pets are going to be able to hit So a common problem that you will run into though is there will be times where your health is going to dip down and that's just that's more a problem with just how much damage 
enemies do in the rift, as opposed to being a flaw on like your character's part. Because witch doctors are rather squishy by nature. But so long as you keep your distance and you don't let yourself get backed into corners, you tend to do just fine. Like I said, if you are super worried about um, damage being taken, and you feel that maybe your pets are doing enough damage that you don't need confidence ritual, you want to maybe keep your distance a bit more, you could sub out confidence ritual for uh, bad medicine, actually. And bad medicine will make it so that your enemies deal less damage. So on the off chance that they do hit you, It's going to hurt a lot less. I, I'm pretty sure I just saw 9 billion crit just there. So, this build isn't by any means bad. Um, the most I would say is it needs a little help with toughness. And the Eukapian Serpent would deal with most of those problems. Um, other than bad medicine, you could maybe run jungle fortitude just to get that base 15% damage reduction for you and your pets. So there are there are a lot of choices you can make for this build in terms of what passives you want to run. Um, Zunimasa does give you a lot of uh, leeway with how you want to run that, especially since you get that uh, you get that basic damage reduction for how many fetishes you have out, thanks to the four set bonus. And since you have 23 fetishes out at all times, that's 46% damage reduction just right off the bat. The biggest problem is when you run into elemental affixes that Swampland weight or uh, Swampland attunement doesn't protect you against. Like when you get hit by stuff like poison or arcane, it hurts a lot. And if you get hit by a really powerful like arcane enemy, chances are you will probably die from it. So, enemies with lasers are your worst enemy, and you would do very well to stay away from those. But for the rest of them, you can probably manage. Alternatively, if you don't want to run uh, bad medicine or jungle fortitude, and you want to manage a, uh, a somewhat balanced addition to both attack and defense, then I would recommend running a Gruesome Feast, actually. The increased intelligence does help with your resistances, makes you a little bit more bulky, and the additional intelligence also boosts your own attack power. So, like I said, guys, there are just so many options that you could run for Zunimasa. It's, it's not going to be a super pushing build by any means. You're not going to be running <laughs> Greater Rift 80 with Zunimasa. It's just, it's not going to happen. But, 
At least not solo. Maybe if you're in a good enough group, you could run Zunimasa with all your pets. And you could probably do just fine. But... If you want to run between like 50s and 60s, and you're careful enough, then I do think you could go the distance with Zunimasa for that. And this way it lets you fully enjoy that pet witch doctor feeling while not having to compromise too much on gear. Like, it's it's certainly not going to hold a candle to things like uh, Legacy of Nightmares or even the Helltooth Pet Witch Doctor has been pretty decent from what I've seen. But if you just want to fool around, if you're not interested in like super high tier pushing, if you're if you tend to T10 farm, then this is actually a really nice build to run. It's it's not the fastest, but it does there's relatively little on T10 that will kill you thanks to all your pets that are constantly just dealing with your enemies so completely up to you guys whatever most matches your playstyle I would say go with it but I was a huge fan of uh, Zunimasa and I always like every patch I like to try and see where Zunimasa is at see if there's anything I can maybe do with it so there you have it that was a relatively quick greater rift 50 and as you saw, the Roof Guardian just melted from my pets. So, um, definitely I would say try it out. At the very worst, you just, you won't like the playstyle. And you can switch to a different build. But if you're like me, and every now and then, you want to feel like a witch doctor should as a, as a pet uh, centered build then this would probably be the build for you so other than that I think the biggest thing to look out for if you're trying to gear up for this is remember that ancient gear is always gonna trump not ancient gear and as you can see I've got quite a few pieces that aren't ancient here so I feel that if I do find ancients for that it'll do a little better in gameplay wise so I just changed confidence ritual to gruesome feast because I think that may be better in the long run but there you go guys that is a brief look into my Zunimasa pet build I rather like the playstyle it, it makes it so that I'm not constantly spamming buttons I'm not constantly worried about keeping my pets up in their up times and to me this is kind of what embodies a witch doctor just a bunch of pets running around uh, helping you out but that's where I think I'm gonna sign off if you enjoyed the build, if you guys like what you saw, um, feel free to subscribe below so you can keep track of what I'm going to be doing 
going to be doing quite a few videos in the next few weeks to talk about the different classes and the builds I'm running on them. Um, if you're solely a Witch Doctor fan, then keep your eyes peeled because I will be doing um, two more videos, one for Helltooth and another one discussing um, Jade Harvester. So, uh, if you enjoyed the video, and if you think I'm doing a good job, please like and comment below. I always look forward to hearing from people who watch my videos. Any, uh, any sort of advice from you, maybe if you have an idea on how to make the build better, I would appreciate hearing that too. And that's all for me. I'm the Movie Cuban signing out. Hope to see you next time.